Welcome to the Monday, October 21st meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. Let staff and members introduce themselves. Benjamin Jean, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett, member. Liz Pritchett, member. Rebecca Owens, member. So the four of us tonight. Okay. At this point, we'll let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and process. Okay, so I am going to share my screen, Alexi, because uh, you haven't seen this before. Um, the stuff on the screen is really more for people who are watching via Orca Media, um, but there'll be some stuff in my little spiel for everybody who's on remotely to remember. Um, okay, so... For anyone viewing tonight's design review committee meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in the discussion via the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options. Um, if you want the full video experience, then you're going to want to type this link into your web browser. I will get a notification that you want to get into the meeting and let you in. Alternatively, you can dial this phone number um, and plug in this meeting ID when prompted. And again, I'll get a notification that you want to get into the meeting. Um, if anyone is trying to get into the meeting and having problems, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. Um, for everyone attending via Zoom, please note that turning your video on is optional. And actually, if you're having issues with delays um, or, or sound, then actually turning off your video is your best option to clean that up. Um, we're also going to ask that um, if anyone, um, oh, sorry, wrong spiel. Uh, <laughs> we're going to ask that everyone, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise. Um, and note that the Zoom chat function should be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions only. Um, questions, comments, or answers to questions about uh, actual project on the agenda um, needs to be done verbally. Um, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, it will need to be continued to a time and place certain. I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair. At this point, we need to approve the agenda. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. I hear a second. Hold that, Liz. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Stephen? Rebecca? I'm assuming Liz said yes. 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 Okay, unless anybody has anything to add at this point, we can go to the first application for 72 Berry Street. Jane and Stephen of Rebellini for a new garage. Come up and explain your application. If you can just make sure to speak into the microphone as best you can. That way people remotely can hear us and the recording for the minute taker. That would be great. They have your plans, and I can share them up on the screen okay. if you want. Jane, you want to start, or you want me to? Oh, well, we're the owners of 72 Barry Street. It's a 1890 home uh, on the corner of Hubbard Street and Barry Street. And we've been living there now for several years, during which time we we're trying to restore the home. And um, we finally got around to facing another winter soon and realized I was going to be scraping the cars out again every day. Maybe we should have a garage. So um, I had been looking for a long time and finally struck up upon uh, plans for sale that actually had uh, some Victorian elements to them, which is highly unusual. We thought it um, would look lovely thanks to the, the house that we're living um, the cupola, the uh, weather vane, the gingerbread under the peak of one of the, the classic uh, multi-peak roof. All of these are, are Victorian elements um, together with the, the wind style of the windows and so forth. So, so we uh, have submitted our plans um, for a 24 by 24 foot, actually fairly small, two car garage, one story. Um, and uh, we hope you agree that this will be uh, complimentary to the neighborhood and 
into the styles around us. This um, is the only rendering that we have of it. Is that true? Like we have drawings. You have the whole complete package. Somewhere. Right. I have yeah. all the uh, yeah. but, but, framing yeah, drawings, yeah, so. but as far as the rendering, that's right. I think we yeah. only have one. Yeah. 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 So what I'm going to do is I can pull up at least um, like a Google Street View of the house. So and you I'm have just, that to look at too. And the way that it's oriented is I'm looking in the drawings is that the doors face the house and then the, I assume the stuff in this, what they're calling the rear elevation, maybe the side is what is along the sidewalk. Uh, yes. Yes. It's a yeah. heavily trafficked yeah. area because people like to park on Hubbard Street at no cost and walk yeah. into town. Sure. Yeah. So I have pulled up on the screen right. um, just the, the Hubbard Street view of the house. Yeah. And so, yep, the garage will go here right with there. the yeah. the doors to the garage where the cars will come in facing turn, Ferry turn Street. Right. Turn right. Turn right. Yeah. the garage then. Yep. So you pull in and then hang a right to go into the garage. Yeah. The, so, yep, we'll side where it is currently. Right. And the way that it's drawn on this plan looks like it's closer to the sidewalk than maybe you intend to put it. Like, I'm assuming you're going to keep those trees. Well, actually, those trees, we just had uh, a guy tree over works. at Tree Works was over a week or two ago, and both those trees are badly damaged, mm -hmm. he recommends. And diseased. He and said. diseased. And um, we hired him to do the other crab apple tree in the corner of the city. And we're going to try and save that one. And a um, great northern catalpa tree up front or something is called. But you got to do something to, yeah, that bigger tree. There. I guess it's great northern catalpa trees, but, which I had never heard of until this, um, are becoming rarer and rarer. We were advised to sacrifice a couple of very small maple trees in the corner, perhaps, to save the catalpa. So. Tree Works plan was to take down two kind of baby maple trees that are growing into the catalpa. And then we'll have a better view of how um, much the catalpa is still there. Mm -hmm. It's the tree that has the very long green beans hanging from. Mm, yeah. yeah. Very unusual. Yeah. Huge leaves. So, so he recommended that, well, the first tree, the top's pretty well broken off at when the last snowstorm we had in April. Mm -hmm. You know, a bit yep. piece of it broke off, but it, it really didn't even do it this summer. Yeah. So you're intending to take those take that down anyhow. And then the, the garage or not. Right. And then the garage will be roughly like in this plan, it looks like it's pretty close yeah, to the it's, sidewalk. It's a setback it's like five is foot five set foot setback. Back, so yep. it may be six, you know, or something. But you know, you're, you intend to max that out yeah, and get as yeah, close. It yep. was a bigger backyard. Yep. <laughs> Because yeah, this isn't, uh, this is all going back to grass back right. in here. And then the garage also acts a little bit as a privacy screen right. for the backyard. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Just oh. give yourself enough room to move snow back there if it starts piling up. <laughs> and also a buffer between the garage and the sidewalk. Yeah. Maybe some flowering shrubs or small tree like a Japanese maple or something. Just, just remember that with the sidewalk plow, it'll push snow into that gap. So actually perennial beds or something in that space might be better than a shrub. A shrub might get buried. If you put something there, it's going to need to be resistant to snow. Steve's a very experienced uh, snow plow. <laughs> or dealing with snow anyway. Yeah. Yeah. We've, <laughs> we've planted yews for shrubs. And they seem to withstand the snow better oh, than anything. Well, yeah. I've had icicles come down, beat them to death, and they a month into the spring, they look like they've never were touched. I think this house is one of the more like iconic, beautiful houses in Montpelier, and I'm really thankful that the two of you are the ones that own it. And I am want to just check in about the siding details on the garage and how they relate to the house and what your thoughts are on that. Um, those beautiful curved clapboards are like really incredible and whether there's a way to, you know, match that sort of reveal and size of the clapboards on, on this garage. To have a curved? Well, no, no, no. Just the reveal 
Like, it, would be a, it would be about the same. I believe. Yeah. And then it's also got the scallops mm -hmm. like on the house. Yeah. And does right. the house have a shingled detail up high also? Yes. Yeah. It does. Yeah. 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 It does. That's I great. Pull that in. I thought it did, but I just. Um... It's the green. Right. Yeah. You won't be able to see it. Well, yeah, you can actually. The light shows. Yeah. Yeah, I know the I know the collaborative detail down low, but the to have the shingles up high yeah, to, yeah. to match that is nice. So and on I, that side is the shingles, then on the back side and the front side is five boards. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And they are. They're not like a narrow, narrow reveal, but they're right. not not a big reveal. Yeah, not a big reveal. Yeah, I think yeah. they're three inch yeah. order. And if we could match that clabbered reveal on yeah, the that was garage, the yeah, that would be great. Doesn't have anything to do with the appearance of the garage, but with the the valleys that you have, I highly recommend just in terms of the materials, uh, either five eighths plywood for the roof or the Advantech works great. And the yeah. Advantech is competitively priced and it can sit out in the weather exposed. I, I know because we replaced a lot of, <laughs> of uh, floors sheathing yeah. uh, after the flood with Advantech. Yeah. And there's a fellow in the valley who put a deck outside and he covered it with Advantech. It's been out in the weather for two yeah. years and it looks new. That is a and good product. And then use the Advantech and then Put a uh, water and ice shield on top of it, especially with the valleys. Yeah. And you'll yeah. never, ever have a leak. And we're not planning on heating the garage, so. Yeah. yeah. No. There shouldn't be an icing problem. No, it's a very nice design. Yeah, I'm really grateful that you put the thought and effort into doing something that matched that house as well as you've done. I was just curious if um, there is a, a loft or an attic in that. It doesn't really matter, you know. I, I don't believe so. It might be like a, a uh, storage mezzanine. You can put stuff up. Oh, I see. I yeah. see. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone else have any other questions? If not, I can read down through. There's a criteria sheet for projects in the design review district. Number one, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. New construction shall be considered to be compatible if the materials used possess a kind or type that are appropriate in the district. Materials selected shall either fit the neighborhood context of the proposed building and or reflect the nature and use of the structure acceptable. Height, building additions or new buildings shall not overwhelm the primary facade, must consider varied heights of existing buildings and adjacent buildings acceptable. Um, Proportion, compatibility of relationship between width and height of facades, as well as relationships of width to height of windows and doors, acceptable. Rhythm, visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors in the facade of buildings shall create a rhythm, acceptable. Roof shape and equipment, consider similarity or compatibility with roof shapes in immediate area. Concealed rooftop equipment and features on flat roofs from my level view from adjacent public rights of way and from the ground level of any adjacent properties, acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tablature, trim, and other forms of built molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building. New construction, architectural features prevailing in the surrounding area shall be regarded as suggestive of the extent, nature, and scale of details that are appropriate for new buildings, acceptable. 
Roof drainage systems shall not hide or obscure architectural character defining features and shall run adjacent to building corners when possible, acceptable. Outdoor lighting fixtures. Structural design of outdoor lighting fixtures shall be compatible with the architectural design and function of the building and compatible with the neighborhood. Do you have any lighting proposed? Uh, I yeah. think there's three lights on there. Yeah, there's some on the plan. Kind of like little carriage lights. Yes, on the corners yep. and then one by the door. Right. Okay. Carriage Structural design of outdoor lighting fixtures shall be compatible with the architectural design and function of the building and compatible with the neighborhood, acceptable. Landscaping, screening, and site furnishings. Projects within the design review overlay district and subject to the landscaping requirements shall consider the following. Site furnishings, including fencing, seating, or other types of site furniture visible from the street or side yards. Does landscaping obscure or undermine key architectural patterns or elements on historic buildings and mechanical equipment screening, which doesn't apply here? The remainder is acceptable. Criteria for new buildings only. New development shall incorporate sustainable design and construction methods and materials compatible with historic materials and styles. Acceptable. Scale and massing of new buildings shall be compatible with surrounding structures. Orientation. New buildings shall be oriented toward and relate both functionally and visually to public streets and or common greens, parks, or plazas. To provide a uniform streetscape, new principal structures shall be located and oriented with their fronts parallel to the street and with the setback distance com comparable to adjacent structures. Acceptable. Continuity of physical elements such as yards, fences, evergreen masses, or building facades along a street, acceptable. Context and connectivity. Building design shall be sensitive to the overall character and content of the design review overlay district and to adjacent buildings, acceptable. Accessory buildings and structures. New accessory buildings or structures shall be located within either the side yard or rear yard and shall not visually disrupt the streetscape or affect the integrity of the existing building or proposed new building. Acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Stephen? Liz? Rebecca? Four in favor. And I need one of your signatures on the sheet, criteria sheet, and you can explain the next step. Um, so we should be able to get the permits out pretty quickly. It's just, um, I've got to make sure Michelle's in the office to be able to sign it. I'm not sure what her schedule is tomorrow, but we should be getting these issued tomorrow or the next day. Do you want us to email when they're ready or do you want us to just put them in the mail? I don't know what Steve would answer, but... I don't see the rush because <laughs> so, so mail is fine. Email. We will just mail it. Awesome. Good luck okay. with your project. Looks very you. looks very nice. You're gonna really like having your garage car inside the garage. Have a great night. We can move forward to the next application for 35 Helm Street. Applicant Alexi High regarding a vent in a rear window for a kiln. Is someone online? Yeah, Alexi's yep. online. Yeah, I'm here. Describe your application for us. Um, I'm going to be uh, putting a kiln in uh, 35 Elm Street and making it into a pottery studio. And so um, I'll need a way to, to vent that kiln. 
Um, and rather than, you know, um, going through the wall, um, I, I'd like to use a panel in the window set kind of like an air conditioner um, that sits inside the window, um, has a hole for that vent, and that's how I vent during firings. Um, and so the way I'm kind of thinking of it is that it'll be, um, in the window when I'm, when I'm firing and I can kind of take it out when it, and close the window when it gets, um, when I'm done with the firing so that I don't have to lose heat out that, um, out that window or cool or whatever it is. Um, so, um, the the panel itself would probably be made out of you know like um eighth inch aluminum um and the ducting is similar to or it's the same you know material as dryer ducting and um uh i don't you know you can make them so that they have the little um vent door on them um i could do that but um, mainly it would just be a way to get the, get the air out of the studio. Sorry for the delayed share screen. I was trying to answer somebody's email. Um, so yeah, here's your mock-up from the inside. It's kind of hard to do a mock-up on the outside given that it's over the river. Um, and then there's the window right now. Right. And I don't, um, you know, I'm not sure what the concerns that the committee has with um, aesthetics or with, you know, the mechanics, you know, the mechanics of the event, but um, I'd be happy to hear any suggestions or, or concerns that you might have. We only really care what it looks like from the uh, outside. From the outside, if you're in that parking lot across the river, so maybe you'll do a nice job painting it a nice color. <laughs> I'll do a mural. How often do you use the kiln, or do you plan on using it? Um, probably the most it'll be used is twice a week. You know, that would be pretty heavy usage. Mm -hmm. um, I imagine it'll probably be more like every other week. Okay. So is this a um, recommended way of venting the kiln as far as safety goes? Fire it and is. safety? Mm -hmm. It is. It, it um, complies with um, Scut Kiln Company has a... Uh, um, guidance on how to vent kilns and this is their this is what they recommend um one thing i should mention too is that the the kiln it's it's not shooting just pure you know kiln air out of the vent it's mixing that uh small amount of air it's pulling from the kiln with air from the room and sending that out so it's not it's not hot it's not like um you know 2100 degrees or anything it's 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 more in line with, you know, a drier vent temperature. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and I think I've been able to pull a view from across the river of the back of that building. I think this is the right one. I think this is the back of that building. Yep. That's it. Yep. Yeah. What, what is the size of the vent pipe? Um, I think it's, four inches it's four or five inches somewhere in there i can't remember what one, one thing you you might be able to do would be to create an insulated panel and then use what's normally used for a like a wood stove vent either a double wall or a triple wall mm. which would if you if you need the extra uh the extra separation then you could put that into an insulated panel and then it could stay in there in the winter if you if you chose 
I'm not sure. I'm. It looks like the window is a fairly new window. I'm not sure if the window's wood or vinyl. It looks like it might be a vinyl window. But in any case, you could put the insulated panel in with the vent in it and then put foam in the top to seal the space between the sash. And then that could remain in so you don't have to take it in and out. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, and again, I'm not sure what the specs are on the pipe and the and the heat, but either a double wall or a triple wall uh, sleeve would make that really easy to deal with. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's good to good to think about. I mean, um, um, whenever I'm doing firings, the the vent, um, the pipe isn't actually all that hot. So I'm not so worried about that, but the, the insulation just to be able to keep it in the window would be nice not to have to take it back in and out. And you could use a, a rigid insulation between two panels and, you know, glue something together that could fit into that space that would take the place. It could be the thickness of the sash. Mm-hmm or close to it so that it fit it into between the jams and the window frame. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. And from the outside, I would suggest to make it less visible, make the panel as dark a color as you can. Okay, so paint it, paint it like a black or something like that or dark gray or something. Something that, you know, it's compatible with the siding on the building, maybe. Well, if you look on the, the okay. building's really, really light. Okay. It'll be one of those well, two make, side by sides up. on the bottom. Yep. Even though the building is light, if you look at the windows, the appearance of the windows is dark from the outside. Like the glass in the window. Like the glass in the window. If you look at the back of the building, like on the lower right, and I'm not sure which window it's coming out of, but on the lower right, uh, those the appearance of the glass is is black from the outside. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think black is good too. Yeah. I was curious: is this the only window in that room, or because mm -hmm. you might want to open a window in the summer if there is another one? <laughs> yeah, and that's going to be what the thing I'm thinking is that I'll probably have. Um, a, a fan in that window to the right or, or to the left. And then that'll be pulling in air cause it's going to heat up the room, you know, a bit. So, yeah, I'm definitely thinking of a window, um, fan kind of, you know, the ones that like exchange the air, one blows in, one blows out kind of thing. Right. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else have any other comments, questions, or suggestions? Otherwise, I can read down through the criteria. It's a lot of criteria for a. I, it's feel free to skip small, over small free panel. To skip over that's some good. of them. It was just <laughs> no, that's I okay. The caution of not <laughs> yes. saying don't look at criteria. No. <laughs> so for guys' job. For all projects, number one, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. Uh, there's no removal of historic materials. Character-defining features, finishes, and construction techniques uh, that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. There's no deteriorated character-defining features. Uh, and there's no treatments that cause damage to historic materials, so that's acceptable. Existing buildings should be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but does respect and is compatible with the massing size, scale, architectural features, detailing, and overall character of the primary historic building, acceptable. Uh, no landscaping, location, and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, trash storage, and fencing should be cited to minimize adverse visual impact. That's acceptable. Rhythm, visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors, and the facade of a building 
shall create a rhythm. This is acceptable in an existing window. Uh, architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tablature trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in any alteration. Architectural features on an addition. There's no addition here. This is acceptable. And lastly, windows and doors on historic structures, character defining windows and door patterns, placement sizes, proportions, and original features such as trim session moldings shall be preserved to the extent possible. When preservation is not possible, such character defining windows and doors must be rehabilitated or replaced. There's no change here. It's just an open window with a panel in it. Acceptable. And the only recommendation that we, a couple of people have made is that the uh, window panel or the kiln vent should be a dark color to make the panel less visible from the outside. You can get the, like the vent covers in black too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All in favor of the applications, speak your names. Because there's, my vote is not required, I'm going to recuse myself in the, as Alexi is a friend of mine. Ah. Oh, okay. Steve approves. Liz approves. Rebecca approves. Vote is three to zero in favor. First step cleared. Um, so what I'm going to do, Alexi, is I'm going to uh, take a scan of this recommendation form, send it to you to just sign off on that um, that little tweak, that recommendation. Um, and then it'll go in the packet that goes to the development review board um, for the hearing on the conditional use change in two weeks. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank, thank you. So you. Much. Thank Appreciate you for it. coming and good luck with your uh, kiln project. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. You'll hear from me soon, Alexi. Perfect. Thanks. The rest of the thank you. Do you have the rest of the recommendation for me? Just give me. There should be another page. We had to be page three and four. There we go. Oh, sorry. Thank you. No, that's okay. I get it. I do it now before I forget. Thank you. Has everybody had a chance to look at the minutes from September 16th and October 7th? Any comments, questions, or suggestions? We've got head shakes remotely. I can't comment on September 16th. You right? can comment on like copy edits. Stuff. Right. <laughs> we've got two, yep. we've got two who can review the content. <laughs> yeah. We can do them actually do them separately. Yeah. So September, uh, we have not enough. I mean, Liz. technically, not okay. everybody has to have been there, but if you guys aren't comfortable with only two of you being able to review the content, that's fine. No. If we don't have to, we can approve it. It's up to you. I'm happy to approve them, just being clear that I wasn't yeah. there to... <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> Do I hear a second? Liz? Liz, yes. Okay. All in favor, speak your names. Ben. Steve. Liz. Liz. September is approved. <laughs> How about October the 7th? We've got Steve, Ben, and Rebecca. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve? So moved. Second? Rebecca seconds. All in favor, speak your names. Rebecca. Stephen. Approved. Does anyone else have anything to add at this point? Don't we have some other business, Mary? Uh, 
they haven't shown up. Um, so, uh, I am going to show you, I guess, a project. Um, I'm going to pull. If you guys could each just take one of each of those, and then Ben can have one of each. Um, let me pull this. So this is the city center. They're trying to replace the flashing. Um, because they've got issues with um water getting in underneath and they've got to fix the roof. Um, and so hold on one second. Right now it's actually copper flashing up there. Um, and what they would like to do, I guess I'm going to share, no, I don't want to share my whole screen. Um, so this is what's up there right now. Um, and because of costs, they would like to replace it with, I don't know if this will show. Nope. Nope, it didn't change. Hold on. Got to share the other one. I've never seen that baking. Why is no, the brand I, upper junction? They want to replace it with something that's cop, you know, similarly colored to what's up there right now. Okay. But that is not a copper material. Okay. Um, it's you know it's a change of material, so I have to send it to you guys. Um, it's not a building that's on the historic register right now. Um. Some so anodized metal that they use for standing seam material. I think so. Um and the color it's not a paint again, it's a uh part of they the said metal. galvanized metal flashing instead of copper. Use dark bronze as a color selection. Yep. Is what they're gonna submit for the application. And so they basically we had this conversation late Thursday when I'd already posted agendas and done everything. Um, and just with our standard deadlines. So they'll come before you guys officially in two weeks. Um, but I suggested that somebody be here tonight to run it by you just to get sort of a straw poll sense of whether or not okay. it would be acceptable so that they could at least go forward with some of the other ordering of materials or not, depending on what you thought and get a, get a sense of what you thought. It's done this with a few other people. Do a little interesting cornice work. No, it's not. Do, do anything to make that building that was, reasonable. That was on the that was on the alternative design that was in Jay Ansel's back pocket. Yeah, I know, I know. Years make ago. it more interesting. For Were you sure. on board when that building got built? Oh. No. I think Eric might have been part of that somewhere along the way, or he just knew about it. I'm surprised nobody asked about the alternative design. <laughs> It's popped up before. <laughs> but no, the, I mean, it's going to look the same as yeah. it does now. It's just a different yeah. material, yeah. but that's. It's just one of those things I can't, I couldn't approve it because it's a change yeah. in materials. Yeah. So okay. I can let them know that it yep. looks. Fine. No issues with it. Yeah. And if they want to do anything to. Uh, make the building more interesting. And <laughs> make the building more interesting looking, they can mm. do that as well. Well, that's, I'm <laughs> good. There are other materials, you know, they uh, they have, uh, there's actually a couple of places up in Burlington where they can take metal and they can form it mm -hmm. in different configurations and make sizes and make something that looks really interesting other than just a eight inch flat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I think I'm going to be, for that building, my, ta my job is going to be tackling the, all the stuff that, the United States Postal Service did without getting permits for any of it, including like all sorts of stuff. And being like, well, that's great, except that, you know, Nettie is actually on the hook because all those permit requirements are for him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how how much we're going to deal with that. Um, but yeah, no, it would be nice if they did something artistic. Even if they could interesting. replicate an original style they could do yeah. anything but well i will talk to them i will let them know 
that even though they weren't able to attend, <laughs> um, the we're rooting feedback. for them to do something great. <laughs> <laughs> Because that building needs help. Yeah. Yeah. At the moment that they're willing to do something that they need some more. That way, when you're driving to Burlington before you get to Williston, if you're driving along and you look on the right hand side, there are three brick buildings, office buildings, uh, right after the Whale's Tales. There are mm -hmm. three brick office buildings that have different treatments on yeah. the on the, the cornices. Yeah. yeah. One's just very plain, one has brick that's offset to give some shadowing. And then one has some rough granite. As you pass by and look at all three of them, and it's really easy to pick what your preference might be. Hmm. All right. I will. We'll have to take a look. That's a good, that's a standing built comparison. Yeah. Easy that's to do. That's kind of cool. I don't think I'd. Because most of the time, and I'm the, the driver. So I noticed that when each one was being built, and the one with the granite cornice work stands out. It's amazing, the difference. And again, <laughs> the three different treatments, and it's like a uh, it's like a lab. <laughs> it, well, awesome. Does anybody have anything else, or do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do I hear a second? I'll second it, Liz. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Rebecca. Ben. Liz. And Steve. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>